How many of you have been the parent, you've been the one assembling the bike Christmas Eve just for your child and you're getting frustrated, yes, myself included. So, uh, man, uh, chaos can happen during the holiday season, not just Christmas, but even Thanksgiving. And so uh, tonight, if you came also to hear Pastor Courtney, um, sorry to disappoint you, uh, she is homesick and so um, it's just... This guy and myself here to be able to, to share the word with you. I know, we're sorry. You can, you can leave if you need to. But, uh, so we're going to do the best that we can to um, fill in and some of the thoughts that Pastor Courtney had. But um, in, in a holiday season that's supposed to be relaxing, um, where you can maybe get caught up on sleep unless you're the Sarsfield family, um, in, a, in a season where you're supposed to just spend time with each other and enjoy the holidays, Unbeknownst to us, stress comes in, doesn't it? Even if it's unplanned, sometimes stress can be there and it can pull our attention and and we can have work and family and friend obligations that we feel that we have to be to. And so instead of recuperating, we are more stressed out. And it's like by January 1, we need another holiday just for us. Anybody ever felt that before? You just need another vacation from the vacation. So a few... um, Statistics and facts from the holiday season. 45% of Americans would prefer to skip Christmas because they're so stressful. 25% reporting feeling extreme stress during the holidays. 69% feel stressed because of a lack of time. Other people feel stressed because of a lack of money or the pressure to give or to get gifts. All right, so this is just a side note, and I've seen this online before, but it goes for me as well, that if you're shopping for me this season, myself, Pastor Brian, I wear a size seven in a seven-day cruise, all right? So you can buy that for me if you need to. But um, for anybody who feels less than on top of things, this stuck out to me and very interesting. The turning point from mild to severe stress, all right? They did studies on this. Um, from mild to severe stress, it begins on December 18th, all right? How they figure this out, we don't know. December 18th is when it goes from mild to severe, and it peaks on Christmas Day at 2.05 p.m., just about the time everybody's sitting down to eat a meal. So I suggest if you're going to have a meal on Christmas Day, start at 2.30, all right? That's a perfect time. So, um, but in order to keep pace with chaotic schedules, a lot of people turn to coffee. 49% of people, they, they cope with the stress by drinking lots of coffee. One in six people consume energy drinks. Uh, the majority of people, how many of you say the holiday season is holiday season is great, but uh, I, sometimes I cope with the stress by eating, Yes, anybody else? Maybe you don't know you're coping, but you are, okay? (laughs) 74% of people say uh, they eat unhealthy snacks. Only 25, 24, 25% of people say they cope with the stress by eating healthy snacks. Um, According to respondents, the most stressful parts of the holidays are this. Gift shopping, 56%. The crowds and the lines, 54%. Um, The cleaning, 45%. And knowing what to get people is 38 percent cooking also comes in there at a 36 percent i remember as a young boy growing up i had um my two older sisters and i had three girl cousins i was the only boy on my my mom's side of the family and so um you know when we drew names for cousins i i always had a girl that i had to buy for and more times than not as the cousin that i bought for is opening up the gift that's when i found out what i got them and anybody else like that? You have, you have no idea what you got them, but oh yeah, I'm so glad I could get that for you. My mom purchased it for you, but anyways. Um, the pressure of having the quote-unquote quote, perfect Christmas, it takes a toll on 41% of Americans. These people, they confess that they work too hard to have the perfect Christmas. And that percentage goes from 41 to 49% for moms who put even more pressure on themselves. Uh, This study says that six out of 10 moms, 60% of moms say that they find it hard to slow down and enjoy the festive season. Um, And so when we do unwind in these stressful seasons, here's what this uh, poll said, this result said, for Americans to unwind during a stressful holiday season includes listening to music, watching a favorite TV show or a movie, taking a nap, Orville, are you listening to that one? Okay. Or enjoying a snack. And so think about this. The, the season of thanks, the season of joy, the season of Christmas that we're about to embark on, 
um, can quickly be replaced with stress. And I think we're, we would all agree we've been in seasons of our lives, whether it's now or in the past, where we have been stressed out during on a holiday season for whatever reason it may be. Um, and it causes us to be even more stressed out than ever before. So tonight, we want to take a moment and challenge and encourage our hearts and our minds to know what to do during the season before it fully arrives. How can we embrace the season? And the first thought is this, is our perspective. Our perspective. Um, our expectations during the holiday season can get us in trouble. Uh, we can have expectations that aren't accurate. And, and so why is it that we somehow have this vision that when my family gets together, that crazy uncle, like Pastor Austin said, will all of a sudden magically, you know, not be crazy anymore, right? Why do we, we expect that to happen? Or we expect the meal just to be perfect and come to find out when you cut open the turkey, it's like Chevy Chase and all of a sudden it just pops wide open and it's dried on the inside. Why is it we expect nothing to get spilled and someone else will jump in and do the dishes, right? And then when it doesn't happen, our, our realities are crushed, right? And we have the wrong perspective. We try to put too many expectations on everybody else. And so our perspective becomes unrealistic expectations. And when those expectations are not met in reality, we become stressed. And so during this Christmas and, and Thanksgiving season, um, not even just during those times, but man, we want to encourage you guys to, to ask Christ to help you with your perspective. Ask Christ to help you on your perspective of all things, but especially during this, this time. Having a mindset that is heavenly, having a mindset that is set on Christ will help you gain a proper perspective. Does that mean that the holiday season won't be stressful? Not necessarily, but it'll gain you a proper perspective on things. Christ helps us realign our perspectives. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2 um, our Sunday school class this morning um, talked through these and they jumped out to me. It says, since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated um, at the right hand of God. And verse two says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Listen, when we set our hearts on things above, when we set our minds on things above, we have something to look forward to, and that's heaven. And Christ, as we do that, Christ helps us gain a proper perspective on life and on, on things. And so when we do this, we realize that our life is with Christ in heaven. Uh, we have something to look forward to. Like I said, we begin to value what Christ values. We begin to see people the way that Christ sees people. We, we value people. We see them the way that he does, and we begin to have a heart for them like never before. So listen, it's okay if, not, if, if, if everything is not perfect. All right, if, if not, not everything gets fully done before uh, the family arrives, it's okay. Focus more on family and the people and, and who God created them to be. Instead of pointing out all the flaws that you don't agree with in that family member, why don't you thank God for the way that he created them to be? You may not agree with everything, but try to find the positive in that. And, and tonight, as we'll end in just a moment doing this, but... Um, to have a proper perspective, ask Jesus to help you step back. Get like a 10,000 foot aerial shot of, of what's going to be happening in the season. And ask him for his perspective on things. When, the, when, when you set your heart on things above, when you set your mind on things above, uh, Christ truly does help you. Absolutely, Pastor Brian. Um, I, I think you uh, absolutely hit the nail on the head with just... Uh, challenging us to have the correct perspective. And it's in, it, very important for us to remember that we have control over the expectations that we allow either to be placed on us or the expectations that we place on ourselves. And those expectations will cause us to start preparing for something. Um, back in September, Elizabeth and I celebrated five years of marriage. And uh, to celebrate, we decided to take the kids and take four days out in Estes Park, Colorado. And, and one of the things that we knew that we would be doing while we were there is to be going on family hikes and these walks. And, and we fully expected uh, these hikes to be a little bit difficult, you know. Uh, the kids aren't used to being in a, a kid pack on the back. And um, I'm not used to walking and uh, the altitude and, and um, the, the length and duration of these hikes. We've expected that 
to be difficult. And we expected that our kids might not be used to riding in that pack. So what did we do? We started to prepare for this trip in late July and August. And we started taking family walks around the neighborhood. And I would put one of the kids uh, in in our backpack uh, on my back. And I would wear my hunting boots. And we'd go on these treks. Why? So that we could be prepared for the difficult trek that was going to face us when we got to Colorado. We could be um, preparing our kids um, for, for the, the long trek and being in a backpack. I, I, I didn't want my kids to be blindsided when they had to spend two hours or three hours or four hours in a pack. And in the same way, when we go through the holidays and we're expecting, we have this perspective, we need to prepare ourselves spiritually so that we can respond to the chaos in a grace-filled and a love-filled manner. We see in the Bible that Jesus prepared himself spiritually before he started his days. In Luke chapter 5, uh, verse 16, it says that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. You wonder how Jesus performed miracles. You wonder how he resisted temptation. You wonder how he was able to respond in grace and love when Judas betrayed him with a kiss. He was full of God. He spent an ample amount of time being in the presence of God who gave him the strength to do what he needed to do and to fulfill his mission here on earth. He spent enough time preparing before he did things for God. And this verse says that Jesus often withdrew to places. Could that mean... And could this imply that Jesus spent more time praying than he did teaching and preaching and healing the sick? Could it mean that he spent more time with the source of power than performing the good works that he did? He had his priorities uh, um, straight. And and it's easy for me, and, and I think for you too, we've been in these seasons where we get so wrapped up in what we need to do for God that we simply forget to be with God. And it's so easy for me to start the day with a giant checklist of things to do. I need to do this or that or pick up the kids or do laundry or do my Sunday school lesson or do this sermon or do my college sermon or do Sunday school or do counseling, do yard work. The list goes on and on and on. And and the days only get busier as the season approaches. And I find myself becoming a human doing instead of a human being. And, And maybe that's you tonight. Maybe, maybe you can totally relate and you feel like you've just got this, this list that is never um, becoming shorter and, and, and you're just never getting to the bottom of it and things are just piling up and you feel like as soon as you get out of bed, uh, your feet hit the ground and, and they're running. But God is calling us tonight to withdraw often and to spend time with him. Spend time becoming who God wants us to become simply by resting. And when we do that, two things happen. The first thing is that our, expect, our expectations and our perspective align with God's expectations and perspective. We see the big picture in life, just like Pastor Brian shared. We aren't distraught over the small things. This prepares our hearts for the come what may. Satan can throw any curveball he wants at me because I am saturated in his presence. I can say in my heart, it is well with my soul. When the dog eats the pie that you worked all afternoon preparing, you can say, it is well. I have peace. When your kid spills the milk on your grandmother's silk tablecloth and you've made this beautiful spread, you can say, it is well with my soul. When the crazy uncle just won't be quiet, and he's always got a story to one-up you. You can love him through his annoying personality. Come what may, my faith will stand. It is well, because I am in and secure with the presence of God. And the second thing that happens when we rest and when we prepare ourselves by secluding often and being in his presence is that God prepares you to be able to do the things that you need to do and the things that you are called and he has called you to do. The Bible says, not by might nor by power, but my by spirit says the Lord. And we need and you need God's spirit to get through this holiday season. Because if you hit the floor running and you haven't been filled up with God's spirit, you're doing it in your own power and your own might. And that's not the way that God set it up. I remember when I was in my second year at at North Central University, I was taking 23 credits that semester. I was one of the leaders of the prayer team of the school. Uh, I was very involved with River Valley and and serving on a, a 
multiple times going down and back and forth to their campus, about a 30-minute drive. And, and it was a busy season of life. And, and, and one of the responsibilities that we had as the, the prayer uh, leader of the, of the school was um, every week uh, you were supposed to be in the chapel at 7 a.m. and praying. And I loved it. The mornings that I got up and, and whether I was rubbing the eye boogers or whatever you call them out of your eyes and the mornings where I was just, just trying to just pull myself out of bed, I'd get in the chapel and whether it was for 30 minutes or if I got in there at, at 7.30 and I only had 10 minutes, man, I, I, can, I can remember God just honoring that. I remember that my focus that day was so much more focused and I was so much more productive in the things that I needed to do. God is not a debtor. When we honor God with our time and with every area of our life, he is going to honor your time. He's going to give you the ability to do and fulfill the things that you need to do. One of the main purposes of the Sabbath was to give an individual rest. And not just any rest, but spiritual rest. Because you can sleep for 12 hours, and there might be some people in here that that would do you a really, it'd really do you some good. And you need some physical rest. That is very much real. But how many know that there is a difference between physical rest and spiritual rest? And how many know that when we spend time in God's presence, and if you've never experienced that, I believe that you'll experience that tonight. But when we spend time in God's presence, when we withdraw, when we, we plug into the source of our strength, the source of our life, the source of every breath that we have, we are charged we are rested and we can accomplish so much more with him than by ourselves. In order to have a healthy holiday, we have to be healthy spiritually, and that takes preparation. And Benjamin Franklin once said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. That's very true. Ask yourself in your heart tonight, what are you doing now to prepare for the chaos? What are you doing now to prepare your heart for the difficult situations and the difficult conversations and the, the awkward dinners and, and, and the, the frustrating people uh, that you bump into? What are you doing now to prepare yourself so that when you get in these situations, you can respond as Christ responded? Many of you have probably heard similar sermons to this. You know what to do. You know you should rest. You know you should create margins in your life. You know you should spend time preparing yourself spiritually. You know you need to spend time in God's word and, and spend time worshiping. And you know all of these things, but, but maybe you're like me and you struggle with implementing these on a daily basis. And Pastor Brian, do you care to, to share a little bit more on that? Yeah, I would agree. Spiritual preparation, no matter what season you're in, is very valuable. What did you say? Spiritual rest is very valuable to us. Uh, when Pastor Austin was reading Luke 5.16, says that Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place to pray. Um, when I met my wife, um, I was in culture shock for the, the family size that I was marrying into. Um, I have two older sisters, and remember I mentioned three cousins and so our family get-togethers were less than, you know, 15 people. And, and I now I'm going to her side of the family, and um, I'm just, like, getting stressed out because of the size, how many people are there. Anybody ever, you, you feel what that is like? You, you know, just, there's so many people here. I don't, I'm meeting new people all the time. It was what it felt like for a while. And so I would have to retreat and go to, like, a quiet place like Jesus, but I failed to pray, okay? So I would just go to a quiet place, and Jamie's like, what, what's going on? Why is this like that? And I'm like, because I have to, like, get away, and I'm learning to, to do a better job. But I do believe spiritual rest is so important, um, especially during this season. And, and here's why, because it's very tempting to let your busy schedule dictate everything, and, and that tempting, that, that busy schedule will tend to push aside you're abiding with Christ. And instead of abiding with Christ, you're abiding with the shopping ads, right? You're abiding with uh, that stressful family member. And those are all, those aren't necessarily bad, but instead of abiding with Christ, we're, we're letting the schedule dictate. And so I'm gonna encourage you to don't let this season dictate that because at the end of the season, 
then you'll be out of the habit of abiding with Christ. And that's what we need to take in, into play in our lives. But out, out, on a practical level, we just want to give you a few practical things before we end in a time of prayer. So we have spiritual rest. There is mental rest. We need to create quiet moments. Sometimes we don't like the quietness. We're used to, to the noise, and even if it's white noise, we're used to that. But man, could I encourage you to turn off the TV? Maybe a little sooner than what you're used to. Uh, silence your phone. Shut the computer down. Uh, maybe we need to take a social media fast. Uh, read a book. Something like that. When you can take a mental rest from the noise of, of all that's happening... Um, don't, don't take that 14 pound Black Friday ad, you know, that is coming into, you know, your, your doorstep. Instead of consuming that, push it aside and turn everything off and just have a mental rest. Spend some time in the presence of God. And here's the other rest that happens then when that take, takes place is a physical rest. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is sleep. And I know that sounds silly, but sometimes that's true because you're so worn down. You just need to rest physically. And you'll find that when you're taking a mental rest, when you're turning the TV off, you have time to go to bed sooner. You have time to go to bed a little bit earlier than, than normal. And so not only with the, the rest of spiritual, mental, and physical, but uh, there's, there's this word called margin. And I want to share with you a little bit about this. Um, I found uh, this professional counselor named Susan Jones, and she spoke a few words on it. She said, margin is the opposite of overload. She says, margin is running against the cultural grain. And some of you have, have heard this, some of you have lived this, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but we go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. We're busy running our kids to this practice or this practice or that event, and all of a sudden we know that the day just happened and we don't know how it happened, but we're done. We're at the end of the day. I overheard a parent um, from another school at one of my son's wrestling meets, and he was sharing with another parent. I was eavesdropping, yes, don't judge me, but I, I was listening. And um, this parent, almost like as a badge of honor, was sharing how busy they were. And I'm thinking, I don't know if that's the life that I really, really want, to be so busy. Um, we purposely chose to do some things to where um, our seasons of life um, are little, not as busy uh, because one season we found that we are, were involved in so many things and we had to say no to some things and some good things. But we found that we had more time with our family and that to us is important to us. And so I want to... Uh, this, this word margin, what she says. So let me give you this illustration. If you look up on the screen, um, you'll see this. I know you're all trying to read it, but think about this. Margin is, is kind of like um, what, we're, what is up here, where there's not much white space. This is what our life looks like, looks like if we go from event to event, place to place, thing to thing, and there's no time to reflect. There's no time to um, look back on what life was happening because you're just so busy. You don't have time to be present. You're just in the moment. Does that make sense? And so margin is like the white spaces that separate the letters and the sentences and the paragraph. And so let's, you're all curious what this says, so let's just read it together. Let's see the next one. Here's some popular movie quotes. You're a cotton-headed ninny muggets. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Seeing is believing, but sometimes the most real things in the world are the things we can't see. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is what? Singing loud for all to hear. And maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas means a little bit more. Margin is about creating the white space, about saying no sometimes. And I know that's difficult, but sometimes we have to create that margin in our life in order to be present. How many of you have ever been in a moment where that person, they were physically there, but they weren't present with you? And it's frustrating sometimes. And how better equipped can we be that when we're spiritually prepared, when we take time to, to abide with Christ, that we can be present in the moment. We can be engaged in the conversation with the person. And so along with spiritual rest, mental rest, physical rest, creating margin, there's a couple practical things that, that we want to challenge you with and encourage you with. First of all, this season, um, this month, our church is doing the Thankful 30, 
and I've seen a lot of you following along on Facebook the post. I think today was, we're thankful for our military, and we're so thankful for that. But in the season of finding something to be thankful for, um, thinking outside of just your world and your life, but what can you be thankful for? Also, another thing is um, on the, the Fresh Start Center, before you leave tonight, would you stop by and pick up a, a blue piece of paper? And uh, we created these um, Advent calendars and then Advent devotional. So each day, starting in the month of December, so you can take this now in the month of December, uh, you will have uh, some scriptures um, and a story to read and then some things to encourage you to reflect on of what you just read. And this allows you to, be, um, to abide with Christ but to, to engage your heart spiritually. So these are, are things that you can do as an individual. These are things that you can do with your family, with your kids, young or old. And, and we encourage you to pick one up tonight. Um, another practical thing to do is this, is to focus on others. Pastor Courtney made a great statement the other day when we were meeting. She says, kindness doesn't cost us anything. And it's so true. Kindness doesn't cost us anything. When, when we're so busy doing things, we don't have time to maybe just pause and pray with somebody. She gave us this example the other day. She was uh, walking to a car from Fairway and the person was helping carry the bags to the car and she was having a conversation and something came up where Pastor Courtney says, um, well, I'll be praying for you. And the person you know, said, thank you, and they started to walk away. And, and Pastor Courtney said that God spoke to her spirit and said, no, no, let's go pray right now. Why can't you pray right now? And so she tracked the person down and they prayed in the parking lot right there. And she had that thought, kindness doesn't cost us anything. Just being kind to somebody. And so that's what creating margin will do. But man, if we focus on other people, a couple practical things. Operation Christmas Child starts tomorrow. What a great opportunity that we have to get our, be busy and, and get, our, get our hands working and filling shoeboxes or go out and shop and fill up a shoebox and bring it up here. And these, these kids will never be able to say thank you to you here on this side of eternity. But you don't know what the impact is on the other side of eternity. You're focusing on other people. Last year at Christmas, we started a new tradition for my family where we gave our kids um, uh, an amount of money. And we said, before we even gave it to them, we said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you some money. But we want you to pray about um, what you're going to do with it. And we want you to bless somebody else. We want you to give this away. This isn't for you, but how, what, what is God saying to you to give to somebody else? So how can you use this? And so they, they were praying or thinking through it, so we gave them the money, and all three of them uh, had different things to do. One of them uh, bought school supplies for their uh, classroom. Another one gave to the Haiti mission ship that was leaving the very next month for supplies for that. Um, and, and one of the other ones, uh, they were in a coffee shop with my wife and they decided to pay for someone's coffee. And it, it's simple things like that. But listen, when we focus on other people and not just on our busy schedules, when we focus on other people and their needs and not just on our needs and what we're going to give or what we're going to get for Christmas or Thanksgiving, it allows us to be open to the Holy Spirit, Right? It allows us to be able to be engaged more with the Holy Spirit when we're focusing on other people. So we understand that there's a lot of ways that you could probably deal with stress. Um, but we wanted to start tonight off with a very practical way of ending in a time of prayer. And uh, this is, this is going to be an opportunity for all of us here. We'll dismiss officially all together in just a few moments. But we want to end by preparing our hearts and our minds. Just like the... We read at the beginning of Colossians, set your heart on things above, set your, your mind on things above, on heavenly things. And so before we even leave, some of you are about to embark into a very busy week. So what better way to start your week? What better way to start your holiday season than spending time with Christ? True? Abiding with Christ. And so I want to read these scriptures with you. Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 4, it says... Rejoice in the Lord always. In the chaos of this holiday season that some of you are about to embark on, rejoice in the Lord. He says, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Verse 6, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And that's what we're going to do in just a moment. And the peace of God... And I love this verse. When we do this, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
That's what we need this season, don't we? All the time, we need the peace of God in our hearts. We need the peace of God in our minds. Verse 8, Paul says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And when you do this, he says, the God of peace will be with you. And what word that to me rings out more than anything else, the opposite of stress is peace. And I don't know about you, but man, I want more of God's peace and spirit of my life than ever before. And no matter what comes and what's going to happen over these next few weeks and months for our holiday season, what better way to start than being spiritually prepared? Would you agree? Yes, 